Good afternoon. I have prepared a presentation on how Lion Open Chat Server handles extreme traffic spikes. My name is Inje Kim, and I'm with the Square Dev team. Let me first uh, talk about what I will be uh, dealing with in my presentation. There is a famous singer who has millions of followers, and for the concert of this uh, singer, the fans have uh, joined in an open chat. So thousands of users join the open chat and send and receive many messages. So the traffic surge surges more than 100 times in one open chat. So the over open server open chat server team calls these chats hot chats. And I would like to share with you the actual patterns of the hot chats, some of the problems that occurred and how these problems were solved. So this is the agenda. First, I'm going to introduce to you Lion Open Chat, and then I'll talk about how Lion Open Chat Server handles traffic spikes on Hot Chat, and then I'll talk about future plans. Let me first introduce to you the Open Chat in Line. Open Chat in Line is, can be found on the right-hand corner uh, on the top of Chat Tab, and you can get recommendations or you can search for open chats. You can join the open chats to send and receive messages, images, and message reactions real time. At, in the open chat server, about one, 10 billion uh, requests a day and, one, and um, 10 million requests a minute um, of the API requests. And um, from thousands to tens of thousands of users can join. And for instance, if 5,000 users in the open chat are active and sends and receives in, uh, messages at the same time, what will happen? Some of the open chat experience that we had was the fans of a famous singer who has uh, millions of followers. and um, there are open chats where people watch TV shows together and talk about their favorite actors or models. In these open chats, the traffic can surge for by more than 100 times. If you look at the right-hand side, this is an open chat where 5,000 people have joined. And in a single second, million, uh, one, millions of chats can be sent, and the API requests are maximum 200,000 per minute. So it is a 100 times surge compared to general open chats. So these are called hot chats. The reason why such a large number of APIs are requested is um, deeply related to the architecture of the event-based architecture of the open chat server. The message send, message reaction, and message read, all of these actions are regarded as events. And every time there is an event, it is uh, stored in the storage. And it is sent to the server, to the users through server push. And we uh, send them a message that a new event has occurred. The users who receive the server push uh, gets the fetch events API, and um, they can add new messages on the screen. So these event-based architectures, every time there is an event, it has to be sent to all of the users participating in the open chat. So if there are 5,000 people in an open chat, every time an event is generated, it has to be sent to all 5,000 users. In other words, 5,000 fetch event API requests ha is called from the users. So. In the hot chat where tens of events are created every second, the API requests for fetch events tend to surge. So hot chat where there is a traffic surge, it is an indicator that open chat service is growing exponentially, but at the same time, it poses a lot of technical challenges. So some of the problems uh, that we have faced uh, will be shared in this presentation based on different hot chat patterns. The first hot chat pattern is the hot chat where the API requests for fetch events have sur surged. 
this uh, diagram shows the structure of our open chat server. So when the message is sent, the open chat server stores the it stores in the storage, and Kafka event is uh, sent in the open chat server team published server, and in a separate server group, Kafka is consumed and sends server push to the users, telling that a new event has been generated. So five thousand users are uh, sent, exchanging tens of e tens of messages in a second. Uh, in the hot chat, the API requests surge in the fetch events and. This is what we have experienced in the hot chat. So these are the relevant metrics. If you look at the left-hand side, due to the surge of fetch event API requests, MySQL and Redis uh, has increased by more than three times uh, in the shard request, and there has been a very um, there has been response timeout issues as well. And in Kafka, in a certain partition, a large volume of event was generated to increase the offset lag, or the GC of the server group, or the C CPU use has also soared. We can see this through the metrics. Well, in that case, why does hot chat have create uh, this kind of uh, weight on the storage? Well, for the data storage, MySQL, Redis, HBase, Kafka, various storages are used, and based on chat ID, the data is stored after sharding. And as the open chat service increased, as there are more chats generated, shards can be added for expansion. However, hot chat is one open chat, so shard in the structure where sharding is done based on one chat ID, the data cannot be dispersed any further. So all of the requests made in the hot chat is um, concentrated in the storage as a single shard or a single key. So to uh, we can increase the total number of shards or we can also increase the replication of the shards to solve this problem. is uh, less than 0.1% and we, we cannot add shards or increase the number of replications because it can generate a big overhead. So the open chat server team was focusing on identifying a way to target only the hot chats. If we can identify the hot chats real time, and if we can reduce the fetch event API request, we were able to reduce the weight put on the shard uh, f due to the hot chat. And so if we can identify the hot chats real time, uh, that is called the hot chat detection and throttling. throttling and I'll talk about uh, the way it works in the later slide. So uh, we need to first detect uh, the hot chats and we need to identify what methods to use for detection. We have used Kafka and Bucket. So every time there is a request for fetch event API, we send to uh, send the um, event to Kafka and published server consumes it. And in a single chat, uh, we can see how many API requests have been made. And if the number of API requests uh, exceeds the threshold, then we detect this as hot chat and we store this as hot chat in the Redis. So if we look at it by code, by chat ID, we can record how many API requests have been made uh, for fetch events and we prepare a bucket and every time there is an API fetch event API request, we record in the bucket, and if it exceeds a threshold, we store it as Redis uh, hot chat in the Redis. Before sending uh, the event generation message to, uh, in the server push, we first confirm whether this is hot chat in the Redis, and if it is hot chat, then we do not uh, throttle this. 
and control it so that it does not make fetch event requests. And we could target、um, the hot chats. So in the past, when there were no hot chat throttling, like you see on the left hand side, if there are tens of events created in a single second. We were able to send 5,000 server pushes, and、um, 5,000 fetch event API requests have been called. But after adopting a hot chat throttling, we were able to control the number of server push just for the hot chats. And so, even if there are tens of events per second. The generated events could be received every second only with the server push, so、uh, there were no user impact, and the hot chat fetch event API requests、uh, were reduced. So, the server push throttling, we can decide、uh, the set the time intervals and the level in which this will be applied. And whether we are going to apply throttling or not, it、uh, is done by using the central dogma, which is the open source of Line. And so, without、uh, restarting the server, we were able to、uh, realize this. And so, as you can see here, the requests have been concentrated in a single shard, and the slow query and the Response timeout、um, sometimes occurs. So as we have applied the hot chat ha detection and throttling, we were able to automatically detect the hot chats. And so throttling is only applied to the hot chat. So response timeout issues were no longer found. And we could check real time、uh, which one is hot chat and which one is not. So we can use this hot chat dashboard, which allowed the server team to monitor and respond in a、uh, prompt way. And now I have talked about how the hot chat、uh, issues were dealt with using hot chat detection and throttling. Next, I would like to talk about the hot chats where the open chat participation requests have soared. In the line open chat,、uh, people can search for open chats or also join through recommendations. They can also use、uh, the QR code or link sharing. So until twenty twenty one. There weren't many cases where a single open chat in had a lot of open chat joining join requests, but、uh, since twenty twenty two, there have been many cases where、uh, people concentrated in a single open chat because influencers use the QR code、um, to upload on their social media. So、uh, the open chat service had grown, and the open chat was、uh, used widely among social media users. In the open chat server, when there is a join request, the chat member data is stored in MySQL, and when the join requests crowd in one chat, we can see that there is an increase in the MySQL load. In one second, if there are two thousand、uh, join requests, this is the metric. In one MySQL shard, the insert query is crowded, and you can see that there is a huge spike in slow query and CPU usage. And because of this, the response timeout occurs in open chat server, and the requests going to one MySQL shard is being delayed. And to solve this issue, we tried to find out the bottles, bottlenecks of MySQL. The first bottleneck we found was the insert chat member query. When there is a join request in MySQL, the insert chat member query is executed, and to check for whether the user has already signed up or if it's a redundant member. You can、uh, use the sub query to do the select again in the insert, and if such sub queries different from simple insert queries are treated as bulk inserts statements in MySQL, and if the default value of Inode DB Auto Ink Log Mode is one. Then the bulk insert statement tries to do the table log to increase the auto increment value. In open chat server, 
the default value of one was being used. So when there is a huge increase of join requests for open chat, the competition for table lock for auto increment also increased. And so when the join requests crowd in one chat, and when you check the MySQL metrics, there is high competition to capture the auto increment table lock, and the CPU usage reaches 100%, which ends up in response timeout. To reduce the competition for auto increment table lock, we change the auto ink lock mode in MySQL. If the auto ink lock mode default value is 1, then we change that to interleaved mode 2 so that there is no longer the competition for table lock. In the interleaved mode, if many values are inserted, then the auto increment values may not be continuous. In the insert chat member query, only one member inserts, and if the auto increment value is not uh, continuous because of because there is no logic assuming the continuity, then it makes the judgment that it's, it's okay to change. So in MySQL, if there are several thousands of join requests in one open chat in a second, the CPU usage was maintained at 10 to 20 percent and was able to handle the requests. And there is the get chat, get chat member count query, which also created a bottleneck. In the get chat member count query, they uh, tally the number of members through state equals joined. In the past, we did not have crowding for open chat join, and so we used the MySQL query cache to tally the open chat members. But now we are getting 2,000 and above join requests for open chat. And so when the MySQL query cache processes one uh, join request, then the new member value is uh, renewed and captures the table log, recalculates the number of members, and renews the query cache. This creates a huge load. When there is a join request spike, because of the renewal of the query cache, we see that there is higher competition for a table log, and you can see that on the metrics. So we did, uh, introduced a separate table to tally the number of participating members, and we eliminated the MySQL query cache to resolve the bottleneck. Up until now, uh, these bottlenecks uh, did not surface, but this year when we had the join requests spike, this was a new issue that we found. And when we're investigating the MySQL bottlenecks, we did see that the uh, open chat uh, join requests continued to increase, so we uh, applied a join throttling so that we could do the bottleneck investigation and at the same time make sure that the join requests did not exceed MySQL capacity. And similar to hot chat throttling, every time open chat uh, join request is completed, it is sent to the Kafka as an event, and in the public server, they uh, record how many requests are in the bucket, and if it exceeds MySQL uh, capacity, then the pop-up message says, uh, please make the request later. So, so we are now in the process of uh, resolving the bottleneck. So instead of disabling MySQL, we thought that it would be better to reduce the impact on the other chats through uh, hot chat throttling. And the lesson we learned from join throttling is there could be a several second delay in join throttling that is using Kafka. After the join request is complete, the join event is to be delivered to public server through Kafka, but it has to go through a lot of storage, including Redis, MySQL, and Kafka. And because of Kafka, uh, because of hot chat, the Kafka c w will experience uh, offset lag in some partitions, and this can lead to several second delay. And if there's a delay in front of the public server, then there will be that much delay in join throttling. And if there are thousands of join requests in one chat, then how many, uh, then what impact will the join throttling delay have? 
that much time delayed uh, will mean that the request will not be throttled and will spill over to MySQL. And the join requests that spilled over to MySQL will create more load on MySQL, increase latency, and delay join throttling even further. And as an actual example, there was a time when join throttling was working well and delayed for several seconds. But during that split window, thousands of join requests crowded in a second, and all these requests spilled over to MySQL, created a load, delayed join throttling, and all the join requests were allowed, exceeded MySQL capacity, and led to response timeout. To solve this, we used Redis instead of Kafka, so that every time there's join request, we could tally uh, the number of requests per chat in Redis. Hot chat only accounts for 0.1%. It's a very rare chat, and it does not make sense overhead-wise to uh, include all the logs in Redis uh, for the, the other 99.9%, the general chats. So we used local cache instead of Redis to limit the maximum number of join requests allowed per chat. And even if the one shard processing speed is slowed or is disabled because of hot chat, we wanted to isolate that and not have the other shards impacted. So we introduced circuit breaker and bulkhead. If there are many errors like response timeout, we could fail fast the requests and that's the role of circuit breaker. And to prevent the thread pool from being monopolized by all the requests in one shard, we introduced the bulkhead so that we could isolate the load on one shard and not have the other shards be impacted. So as a result, when there were join requests crowding in one chat in a second, we could uh, handle this without any problems in a stable manner. Up until now, we talked about the two patterns of hot chats and the issues and the solutions. And these are the lessons learned. Uh, so first, we needed a good understanding of hot chat. As open chat service grew, different types of hot chats uh, were formed and we learned that they could uh, create a lot of load on the storage. And it was very difficult to preemptively predict the patterns or the occurrence of these hot chats. And the second lesson was to find these hot chats and to resolve the bottlenecks, we needed to monitor not only the API level request number, but the country, the application type, and request per chat. Just monitoring the requests per API will not let us know whether it was due to hot chat or which chat is hot chat. And in finding the bottleneck, the hot chats could continue to occur. So we had to apply throttling first to not exceed the storage capacity and then sequentially find the bottleneck and solve that. And the local cache and the on the memory and dynamic configuration on the server, due to these, we're able to act in a flexible and speedy manner, even if there was hot chat load. And to isolate the load that is on one shard due to hot chat, hot chat we needed to do sharding and also circuit breaker and bulkhead per shard. The hot chats are 0.1% of the total chats. They don't occur every day. So we needed to think of the proper way that is targeted to these rare occurrences of hot chat and not produce too much overhead. This is a one slide summary. Well, we experienced hot chat patterns uh, coming from fetch event API requests and increase in join requests. And we looked at the issues and how to solve the bottlenecks. And these could be solved with hot chat detection, throttling, MySQL performance improvement, and join throttling. 
and we introduced circuit breaker and bulkhead. And in trying to come up with the solution, we tried to select the ones that were targeted that accounted for 0.1% of the total uh, chats. So we wanted to be very effective in isolating and minimizing the impact of the hot chats. And this is the future plan going forward. When there's a hot chat, we need to move the hot chat data uh, storage to a separate storage, or we could find ways to distribute the hot chat load. And the way to uh, differentiate hot chat from the others is we have to apply the dynamic value, and depending on the activity of the hot chats, we could uh, apply higher throttling uh, to the more active chats. The open chat services are bound to grow and will create more traffic and there will be more functionalities added. And I'm sure there will be different patterns of hot chats that we are not even aware of. We need to be flexible. And so we are going to continue to improve the architecture of open chat server. So we will uh, go ahead with reliable open chat server that can support the service growth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Inde Kim. Now we're going to move on to the PLUS talk. We are going to receive questions. Please ask questions so uh, you can receive uh, answers from Mr. Kim. Please uh, enter your questions in the chat window. And uh, Koti Shinsuke is going to host uh, this session. Uh, Mr. Koti, can you uh, introduce yourself? Yes, I am in charge of Yahoo Shopping, and my name is Koti. Thank you very much for your session and presentation. As I am in charge of shopping, uh, we are facing a lot of difficulties due to uh, increase in traffic. So I would like to ask you lots of questions if time allows. Thank you very much. So uh, Koti, what was your uh, biggest question uh, for Mr. Kim? Well, I also use open chat and I join an open chat where there are about 4,000, 5,000 people. So I think uh, we are uh, one of the hot chats as well. And I was very uh, moved to learn that you have a lot of uh, solutions. And um, the part where you found out you identified the bottlenecks was very impressive. Uh, how were you able to find the bottlenecks? Uh, and uh, what approach led you to identify bottlenecks? Well, hot chats, uh, it's very difficult to expect where hot chats will occur. So every time there is a hot chat, we have identified the patterns and mechanism, and we have shared uh, with the DBA for each storage, and the DBAs checked the bottlenecks. They've conducted benchmark ch tests, and um, they have actually uh, verified these bottlenecks. So that is how we went about. Thank you very much. At Yahoo Shopping, if there is a sale, um, the traffic surges. So we, the fact that you cannot uh, prepare uh, for hot chats, I guess, it's very difficult to anticipate where hot chats can occur. I think that is the biggest uh, point for hot chat. And so traffic, uh, so when you, uh, do, have you conducted uh, some tests uh, to afford traffic? So we have copied the, the traffic. We have also conducted benchmark tests to find the bottleneck points. Oh, I see. So you have recreated the traffic to conduct a test. OK. Thank you very much.
in the beginning, uh, you talked about throttling. When there's a hot chat, you enter in the number, uh, the information, and the information goes to publisher, and you apply throttling. After you do the throttling, the the what is there? What's the difference between the client who did throttling? So how did you differentiate between the client that did the throttling and not? Uh, if the server push object was whether included or not. So if that is the case, the users who are in the hot chat will not be getting the server push. Yes, that is correct. All the open chat events occur per chat. So we look at the chat ID and we can identify. Thank you very much. In the storage published server, I felt that you had very strong policies. In open chat server, if there is a load, when you get the request, the server, the open chat server, could become disabled uh, with the high load. Is there ever an occurrence like that? In the application layer, we could have the bottleneck of that open chat server. And do you have any countermeasures for that? In order to solve that, not only that layer, also we have to have response for the application layer. In open chat server, we limit the number of requests or we parallelize the response and we change the value of the response timeout. In the published server, we can adjust the speed of consumption and when there are too many events in a short span of time, we will consolidate the events and process them in a batch mode. Thank you very much. If there is a high request for the server, then let's say there is a lot of hot chat requests. But for the overall open chat server, I guess the traffic issue is not that serious. The open chat service is growing. So the total traffic is growing, and the hot chat traffic is also growing as well. Yes, uh, regarding that, do you have any uh, solutions to that problem? Uh, for hot chat, we want to isolate the loads that uh, are created due to hot chat. We're also looking at improving the architecture. Thank you. The CPA usage, well, sorry, on I think it was page 33. So after you have changed the InnoDB auto INC lock mode, uh, you said the CPU usage has uh, been reduced dramatically. So on page 33, there was a surge. Uh, why w did this surge occur? If you know anything about this, can you share? Well, the metric is a metric that was used for the benchmark test. When we increased the request, the cache in the MySQL was not uh, applied. So, But after a few requests, uh, the CPU has become stabilized. So for tempor uh, temporarily, it was increased and then after that um, it it returned to stable state. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. 
It's a very interesting result. Uh, so you said that you are looking at various ways uh, to solve the problem. What was um, one of the most difficult challenges for you? So when there is a concentration of joining open chat, um, the handling becomes delayed, and so there was a high load in the SQL server. It was very difficult to deal with the increase, and so when we were looking for the cause that caused the delay, it was difficult. Thank you very much. I can relate. Uh, that must have been the biggest headache, one of many. We have a question from an audience, and I would like to read out to you the question. Thank you for the presentation. When there is hot chat within the open chat server, the storage and also the line server storage. Were there any impacts on the line server storage, not within the open chat server? First of all, internally, we have the storage sharding by chat ID, so that had the highest load. But as for the external sh storage, we're not sharding by the chat ID. So relatively speaking, they could handle the load. Thank you very much. So you're sharding uh, per chat ID. You're saying that the hot chat only accounts for 0.1%. So within sharding, you, have, you don't have competition for limited resources. Up until now, we did not have that scenario, but I think that could be possible going forward. So we are going to improve on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, uh, so the... How many are you sharding at the moment? Can you give me a figure? Well, it depends on the number of internal data. Uh, I think the size is an appropriate size, and I don't think I can give you the actual number uh, of sharding. Thank you very much. Well, when open chat grows further, I assume that there will be more hot chats, and I assume that you will be sharding accordingly. Um, and Mr. Kim, how long have you been working on open chat? I have joined the open chat server team um, two years ago. So uh, in that two years, you mentioned that there was a surge in hot chat recently. How many hot chats um, have occurred so far? Well, it depends on how we classify hot chat, but there are a couple every month. So. So one a month, did you say? Uh, several a month. Could you repeat? I did not get the answer. Several hot chats per month. Thank you. Oh, so they are quite often. So you must have your measures become more effective. The service will grow, and I guess you will have more tasks, and then I think we will have further discussions. Thank you for your precious time. This is all for my questions. Thank you, Mr. Kim.